Hello my awesome punks and welcome. My name is Heroin Bob and today I'm going to say some shit about my health. This is going to be a little bit long of a video because I want to give you guys some backstory and some context as to why I'm making a video about this as well as a little bit of my own history. And for those of you who maybe already know my history or really just want to know what's going on with me, you can go ahead and skip to this time period for my diagnosis and treatment that I'm going to have to currently undertake. Um, and for those of you who maybe want to know a little bit more about me, uh, let's get started. Um, so this all started when I was 16 years old. Um, when I was 16, I was running a relay race for NJRTC. And I was the last leg of the relay. For those of you that know me, you guys know that I very much enjoy running. Um, so I was enjoying running this relay race, and mostly because we were behind when I started my lap. And I had actually gotten to the point where I was passing every other runner. And I had reached the point where I had passed all of the other runners that were running uh, against me um, when I noticed this black bar rising in my field of vision. Um, when I got about a quarter of the way left on the track to go before the finish line, I don't remember anything else. <laughs> um, I awoke to my commander and all the rest of my teammates standing over top of me because I apparently blacked out behind the pole vaulting mats. Um, I was running and I was doing awesome. Everybody was cheering and then I just disappeared. I vanished. Um, and so that's where they found me, uh, lying on the ground there. Um, when that happened, uh, I had been feeling like flutters in my chest, um, and like rapid heart rate before that. But you know, I just figured like I had too much caffeine or something. So I wrote it off. But when that happened, uh, my parents decided to take me to a cardiologist. The reason why they took me to a cardiologist was because my dad was actually born with a defective heart valve. He's had a repair and a replacement surgery um, for that. So they thought that maybe I had the similar issue. When they took me to the cardiologist, um, they made me wear one of those halter monitors. And um, that's super fun to wear around high school. <laughs> um, so I wore that. Uh, it didn't show anything. Um, so because it didn't show anything, they had me to a stress test. Uh, a stress test normally lasts into 15 minutes and it's where you run on a treadmill at increasing speeds and uh, inclina or inclinations, degrees, whatever, uh, <laughs> Um, in order to increase the strenuousness of the test because it is a stress test. Uh, we got about six to seven minutes in and the doctor was also uh, teaching a residency as well. So there were two other uh, doctors in training as well as a nurse in there and he was discussing what a stress test was and all that other stuff because I was a young, healthy looking teenager and it'd been a while and nothing was happening. So he was taking the time to talk to them. I got to about, I remember 12 minutes into the stress test before my normal heart rate did this thing. It went, dude, dude, what the fuck is going on? So when that happened, uh, my mom actually had to get the doctor's attention to be like, hey, I don't think that looks normal. And uh, that's when the doctor's like, oh, I should be paying attention now. And uh, he just basically said that I had an arrhythmia and a heart murmur and that I was perfectly fine. Uh, he could give me a medication that would make it so I wouldn't feel the murmurs, but they would still happen. And I was like, no, I'd much rather know that shit's going on so like I could stop whatever I'm doing um, than, than, you know, have take a medication uh, and then not know what's going on. Um, so I decided against that. However, that made me, that made me stop running because I didn't feel like I could do that anymore. Um, 
So I actually stopped running for a really, really long time. I didn't start running again until um, after I graduated college. So I took a break <laughs> from running for a while because of that. Um, now also, uh, during this time period, uh, I was having a lot of pain in my shoulders and my neck. And, you know, my if, if any of you guys ever meet me and want me to, like, show you what my shoulders can do, it's a little disconcerting, but I can actually dislocate all of my ball joints, like my my thumb, my thumbs dislocate, my uh, my femurs dislo dislocate from my hips, and my shoulders actually can dislocate very easily. So I've been to probably a dozen different orthopedists for the pain in my shoulders um, and the pain in my neck, uh, trying to figure out like ways to fix this. Uh, unfortunately, there I got several options. Uh, I got physical therapy all the time. Um, which I just stopped going to. I just stopped. I'm like, that's not an option. That's fucking stupid. I know all of the exercises you guys are going to want me to do. I do them all the time. I still have all this pain and it, it's not working. Uh, I even was recommended like they shrink my, my, my shoulder socket with like a heat laser, which I'm glad that I decided not to do one because of the recovery time, but two, because they found out that that was like five or six years later that that was actually the worst possible thing you could do and there were all kinds of complications afterwards um so I, I there was that so there was all this pain I was dealing with all the time and by the way guys um I am in pain almost every day and like you know, if someone asks you how you're doing and you tell them you feel like shit, people stop asking. Um, it's actually not really socially acceptable to say I feel like shit. Normally they expect an okay or this is awesome. And I, you know, I've gotten to the point where like I try to say this is awesome or I try to just talk about like the great things that are going on because people kind of don't want to be around the person that hurts all the time. Um, but I do. And uh, I deal with it. Uh, it's actually uh, since I was probably 14, I've had two days in my entire life where I have been pain free. And those two days, I can remember distinctly one, because I felt awesome, but two, because people kept asking me all day if I was okay. <laughs> because I was a completely different person and that I was like super giddy and really happy. And like, I try to be those things all the time anyway, but it was like, I guess a marked difference where I was just like, wow, you must have been on like some kind of upper or something because you just are different. Um, but I remember that because like, I just felt so different those days. Um, but that's a, that's a side note. So in addition to the fact that my heart was still having these issues and the fact that I was in pain all the time, um, I also, uh, since I've been 16 years old, I three to, about every three to six months, I end up in the hospital um, because best, best way to describe it is my body just quits. It, it just quits. That's three to four times in the hospital every year um, with getting tests done, tons of tests, uh, ER visits, um, getting bags of fluid. And at the end of the visit, after hours and, you know, a couple hundred to a thousand dollars worth of tests, they can't find anything wrong with me. They're like, you're fine. We don't know what's wrong other than you're like really dehydrated and like you're a little bit low on these kind of vitamins. Like, that seems to be all that they can figure out. They're like, your heart's a little weird, but you're already seen a cardiologist about that. So, meh. Um, and it's that every time. So it's just kind of like something as I got older that I just accepted. I was like, okay, it's getting on three months. I feel really shitty today. I'm about due for a hospital visit. 
let's hope tomorrow and I don't is not that day but normally after about a week it would be that day and I would be super weak unable to get out of bed or if I am able to get out of bed it's just to crawl over to the toilet to throw up um, I'm super weak I'm shaking um, sometimes my heart rate is super fast, sometimes it's way too slow, like way too low, um, but my blood pressure is super, super high. Sometimes it's my heart rate's going really fast and my blood pressure is super low. Um, it was like different every time, but it's always like I am super weak, they stick two to three bags of fluid in me and then they release me into the wild um, and say, hey, Hope you feel better. If you don't, you should follow up your, your general care doctor, um, which I never had because um, uh, pretty much after I ran out of my pediatrician, I, I had, I got a new general practitioner and then he retired. And then after he retired, like um, the patient first became like a thing or the, the urgent cares became a thing. So I just went to the urgent care because I mean, I, I tried to get a general doctor and he retired, so whatever. And I mean, it's super faster to go into urgent care anyway, instead of trying to make an appointment with your doctor. Um, at least that's what I've found so far. Although the, the current general practitioner I have so far, which I'll go into later, his office is pretty amazing. Um, so it's been years of heart messing up, lots of pain, hospital visits, and uh, as I've gotten older, while the ER trips have gotten less because I have, one, I don't work three jobs anymore. Uh, I've pretty much worked two to three jobs since I was in college. So only working one job, this one office job, uh, has helped. Um, making sure that I actually sleep helps. Um, the fact that I have changed it to now where I drink a gallon of water, that has helped. Um, but I still end up in the hospital one to two times a year because my body just shits out on me. Um, so that brings us to now. So about a year and a half ago, I decided, okay, I am an adult. I need to do adult type things. I have good health insurance, thankfully provided by my job. Um, I have one job. I should you know, go get a general practitioner. So unfortunately, I, my mom, um, her general practitioner wasn't accepting new patients. Uh, so I decided to go with someone else in their group. His name is Dr. Glenn Ross. And I'm going to try not to get emotional. Um, so I saw started seeing him as my general practitioner. Um, and then I we went and did like the physical and the regular checkup and I told him like all the list of things like all my maladies and stuff and he was like well like you've seen a cardiologist you've seen all these orthopedists you know I mean I can do blood work on you see how that goes see if maybe it's like your thyroid because you have a history of thyroid um, problems uh, we can do like a test on you like to see all your numbers and see if maybe that's it and so we did the blood work and everything came back fine. I was fine other than like uh, my cholesterol needed some work. So the next year I went back to him. We did a physical. He did the blood panel. And he was like, your cholesterol's better. And I'm like, yeah, but I still feel like shit. <laughs> so he was like, okay. Um, and then throughout that year in between those two blood works, I come and made appointments into his office because I was getting sick or I felt sick. But all the tests that they would do at the time, nothing came back. Like, everything came back negative. So it's like I felt sick, like I had cold and flu-like symptoms, or like I was throwing up. And, like, of course, they, as a, as a woman, they run the pregnancy test. And, I, of course, I'm not pregnant. I has no babies. So he was like, okay, well, we need to make you not feel like shit. <laughs> well, um here, let's, let's, let's do this. And he was like, and I was also telling him like, I don't really sleep very well. I have incredibly vivid dreams, very lucid, very vivid dreams. 
Um, sometimes I can't sleep at all. Sometimes I wake up every 30 minutes and like I haven't been sleeping and I was like so let's like you can tell I'm getting upset because like I'm slowly turning red all the way up like as I'm talking like everything's turning red <sighs> so he's like hey we can get you in to do a sleep study um you can get a sleep study either done in Virginia Beach or a sleep study done up in uh Richmond and I was like I'd rather have it done in Virginia Beach and not through MCV because I've had some horrible experiences with MCV and VCU. Um, surprise, by the way, that was in November is when I saw him last. Um, I just got the paperwork to get my sleep study done. Uh, it's August. That's when my appointment is. They just sent me in the mail. They didn't even call me. They sent me a letter in the mail to let me know when my sleep study is. And it's in Richmond because the people in Virginia Beach aren't taking new patients. So I'm just now getting the sleep study done. But the, the other thing he is like, look, there's something else that covers all of the symptoms that you've been describing to me, the pain, um, the weird sensations, the not having any sensation, like having your body crap out on you, like being in pain, like... The heart things, the not having constant blood pressure, the having the rapid pulse, like that can all be explained by this one thing. However, it's really, really rare and only like three patients in the entire time I've been practicing medicine have ever had this thing. So I'm not going to try to get your hopes up, but I can send you to a neurologist to get this testing done. Um, but it's going to be a while because there's only two specialists in this, in this field and, and it's probably going to take you a while to get in because I know one of them's not accepting new patients. So I made an appointment with this neurologist. Um, I made the appointment in November. I didn't actually get to see him until May. And, uh, and yeah. So that makes, uh, that brings us to the main point of this video is what I got tested for. So this super rare thing that um, I went to the neurologist to get tested for is called dysautonomia. And what it is, it's where your autonomic functions, uh, the functions that your body does without you thinking about it, like your pulse, your blood pressure, your heart rate, like when something touches you, whether or not you feel it, like the stuff like, okay, so this me, I'm cognitively trying to move my arm. Um, the autonomic functions would be like me blinking my eyes. Like that's something I do without thinking. Um, so I'm getting tested. I went to get tested to see if maybe I had this thing. Um, so at the end of last month, um, I spent three days in and out of the hospital um, getting tested and I got my results this week. And, and it turns out that my doctor now has four patients that has dysautonomia because I have been diagnosed with um, POTS. Uh, not this kind. <laughs> um, but this kind. Um, POTS dysautonomia. And it is rare and uh, it's currently uncurable. However, it is very treatable. We all live on this big, beautiful planet called Earth. And the reason why we are still on this planet is because there is a force called gravity um, that, that attaches us invisibly to this planet. Um, human beings are amazing in that we actually fight gravity every day. We do that when we sit up in the morning, when we stand up, when we walk, when we jump, when we run. Um, we all fight gravity to do those things. Um, and the way we do that, uh, our bodies do that, is by regulating our heart rate and our, our blood pressure. Um, and of course our muscles, to make that happen. Now, when somebody stands up, 
their blood pressure increases and their heart rate increases so that way they can get enough momentum to stand up and go against gravity. Now the problem is since I have POTS, um, if I want to stand up, uh, my blood pressure doesn't rise. It stays where it is. It's like where it would be right now sitting down. However, when I stand up, my heart rate increases. And then instead of equalizing once I've stood up and started going about my business, as most people would do, like they're like, okay, my body has gotten me up here. I'm good. I don't need you anymore. Blood pressure and pulse rate. We can like go back to the way we were and you go about your business. My body, however, is like, my blood pressure is like, meh, I don't really feel like getting up there right now. But you know what, heart, you do that. You do you, heart. I'm going to, you're going to go do your thing. So my blood pressure stays the same, my heart rate increases, and then instead of leveling out, it just keeps going up. <laughs> and so what this happens is that like, I feel really dizzy um, pretty much most of the time when I try to stand up or like really do anything, um, at least for a good long while. Uh, normally like I might be a little unsteady, my friends and family have seen me walk into things before. <laughs> Um, but m my heart rate stays really high. Um, my teammates, I'm, I can't, again, I'm very lucky to play roller derby for a team with a bunch of teammates that understand <laughs> this issue. Um, uh, where, you know, my heart rate gets really high and stays really high. Um, my way to cope with it, but even before I knew what was going on was to have someone sit on my chest because the compression and the force of someone sitting on my chest forces my heart not to be able to like do this. It's like, I can't do anything. So it forces it to slow down um, and allows me to continue doing the sport that I love doing. Um, and for anybody who watched my Tough Mudder video, I'm gonna do a clip here. Um, and then you actually see me asking some random girl who was kind enough to sit on me to regulate my heart rate enough to where I can continue running. Um, so that that's me all the time. And because my heart is going super fast at random times or at these times, uh, I'm tired all the time because my body is working twice as hard as yours is to do normal everyday things. Um, there are times when I wake up in the morning and I am so tired it feels like there's not enough caffeine in the world to get me to wake up. And I know like I've seen some of y'all's Facebook posts that all of you like everybody kind of has those days. Um, and in addition to feeling like that, like there's just not enough caffeine in the world, it also, whenever I try to do anything or walk around or move, it also feels like I'm walking against a really strong current, just trying to move through air. And and apparently I should not be doing that. If I feel like that, I should be staying in bed. <laughs> but uh, I haven't been, um, which is why I've ended up in the hospital three to four times a year is because I have just kept going because I didn't know I, I was basically made to feel for a really long time like this was all in my head. Um, I, I wanted to wait to make this video until I had all of my results in. Um, the, the POTS diagnosis, the POTS dysautonomia is my diagnosis. Um, however, when I was doing the, the testing, they also, to do the POTS testing, or to do the dysautonomia testing, um, they also did skin biopsies all along my leg. They did three of them where they poked like three nice holes into my leg down into the subcutaneous fat. Um, and the reason why they did that was because they wanted to count all the nerves in each chunks of the, each chunk of skin. Um, and when they did that, uh, they found out that I have some sensory neuropathy, which means that I, they're, they're dead. <laughs> like some of my nerves aren't there. <laughs> like they are dead and they're not regenerating like they should. 
or they're not um, conducting like they should. So that's how come I don't have feeling in my feet pretty much most of the time. Um, it also explains why sometimes I don't have feeling on these sides of my hands. Like there are times where I can't feel anything here. Um, and again, I can't feel my feet most of the time. People are like, well, how do you walk? It's just the feeling, like the sensation, like I'm, I can still move my feet. Those are the large nerves. Those are the large conductive nerves. Those still work. Trust me, from the testing I had done, those definitely still fucking work. Um, it's just like the, the, the pins and needles feeling, or like if you've slept on your arm too long, like when you fell asleep in high school on your desk, and like you woke up and your like arms like like yeah, I can still move it but it's definitely derpy right now like that's that's what my feet feel like pretty much all the time. Um, but that can part be part of POTS like the the neuropathy can be a part of POTS um, because in addition to like not having your heart do what it's supposed to do all the time, not having your pulse or your blood pressure do what it's supposed to do all the time. Um, Sometimes feeling tired all the time, in addition to like nausea or fainting, um, you can also have sensory issues. Uh, you can either not feel things like most people do, which I guess would be a good thing because that's probably why I can get through most of my days and like phase out the pain I'm feeling all the time. Um, or it could be what's causing me to feel pain all the time. Um, there are times when like somebody will touch around my neck or like give me a hug and like they breathe on my neck some and like I can't handle that. Like I love hugs and uh, I especially love hugs from people that I love but sometimes when they like get around my neck area and my ears, like I don't know if you guys have ever seen something about Mary with that earmuff guy, like there are times <laughs> where like I get like that, like I don't want any of this touched and uh, that happens. So that's what I have. I have POTS dysautonomia and I might have some other things going on with me due to the sensory neuropathy that they found. But uh, I just wanted you guys to know what's going on. Um, and then also for those of you that are watching from my stream, that's how come I will never be able to do a marathon stream like longer than eight hours because I... I shouldn't sit up and not move around for that long. I shouldn't be in an upright position that long. So, um, so you guys are maybe wondering, hey, since there's no cure, what are you gonna do to fix yourself, Bob? Well, um, hopefully I won't have to give up anything I love. So what the doctor has, um, has suggested is these five conservative measures um, five conservative measures and those are I need to drink at least a gallon of water a day. I already do that so I have to drink more than a gallon of water a day. Um, in addition I have to eat three additional teaspoons of salt every day. Okay guys so quick break. Um, I realized that when I made this video that I kind of needed a little bit of context so when people think, oh, you gotta drink a gallon of water, no big deal. It's just a little bit more water. Um, I'm a little bit of a math nerd, so I'm gonna make this like maybe a little bit clearer. Most people to function every day, they need eight, eight ounce glasses of water. So that, that is this, this is eight ounces of water. For me, I need eight, 16 ounces of water. So three together there, one is twice the size of the other. So this is just to function normally, I need eight of these versus eight of these just to go through my regular every day. Now this, eight of these is roughly 64 ounces of water, which is four pounds, which is like most people fluctuate three to four pounds in the average day because that's water weight. I have to drink twice that many, which is eight pounds. That's just to like do go to work, come home, shower, hang out, watch TV. Like that's, that's what I need to survive. This is not, sorry, this is not <laughs> endorsed by this, this 
I, while I love Pierce's Pit Barbecue, this is not sponsored by them. It just happens to be the cup that I had that was 16 ounces. So this, is, so again, I need 128 ounces of water to do my everyday life. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to go for a run, say I wanted to go for a three mile, four mile run, um, I would need. 64 so eight of these plus eight of these or another way to put it as you guys know how much I like uh, beer and cider I would need in order to go for a run again not sponsored by this by this place I would need I would need three of these need three of these to go for a run. Now if I want to do derby, which is a three hour practice, I need to have four of these. I need to drink 16 pounds of water in order to in order to play derby in a day. If I if I'm going to go to practice and play derby in order to be healthy, I need to drink two gallons of water to maintain the amount of water that my body needs to make sure that enough blood gets to my vital organs. So that's a lot of water. Um, and I just wanted to maybe make that, make that distinction. Cause I mean, a gallon of water a day to function doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you think about it as I need, I need eight pounds of water. To, to function and then if I want to do the things that I love to do then I maybe need 12 or 16 pounds of water to function that that makes it just maybe that just makes it a little bit more real um, so I just wanted to do that quick timeout um, and now back to the regular video now for those of you that know me know that I am actually allergic to iodine so I cannot have iodized salt. So I now have this with me all the time. Yay. I'm not like, I'm not, this is not a paid sponsorship from Harris Teeter. This is just, this is just what was close by me and I picked up. So I'm, I have to add additional three teaspoons of sea salt every day. Um, I also need to elevate my bed like one end of my bed so when I sleep like my head is up and I can't do it by pillows like I have to have a, a slight incline. Um, I also have a prescription for some pretty sexy compression tights and by sexy I mean not sexy. Uh, I haven't gotten those filled yet because I need to go to like I need to go to a specialty store for that. And uh, the, the last thing is, is that they recommend that when I, when I do exercise, I should be exercising in a pool because the, the weight of the water already adds additional compression. So the reason why adding fluids and compression is important is because my body is working twice as hard so as as normal people's bodies do as people that do not have pots do um, so my body is working twice as hard so I need twice as much fluid so that way I can maintain my my regular everyday life um, the compression is important because remember when I said that when I stand up my blood pressure remains the same but my heart rate increases and that's why I get dizzy. If I have that compression on my legs, it's doing the work my body should be doing for me in hopes that I won't get as dizzy. Now, the, the compression also goes when I'm exercising. So if I'm exercising, so if my body's already working twice as hard as everybody else's doing regular everyday tasks, when I'm exercising, imagine how much harder it is, how much harder it's working. So by having by doing my exercise in a pool instead of, you know, running 10, 10 miles outside or doing roller derby, like they recommend, I, 
I do exercises in the pool so that way my body will work like a normal person's body because I have all that compression doing the work for me. Um, now that being said, I have already increased my salt intake. I have increased how much water I'm drinking. Um, I am going to get the, the super not sexy compression leggings. Um, and I will try to figure out a way to elevate my bed. I have to figure that out with my housemate. Um, however, the exercise thing, I don't have a pool membership. Pool memberships in Richmond are expensive. Um, I also don't really have time for that. <laughs> so, and I, I love running and I love roller derby. So I'm not ready to give those up yet. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to do the other things in hopes that I don't have to give up the things I love. Just to live every day. Sorry. Um, now, in addition, if those, if I do those, these measures, or most of these measures, for the next three to six months and I don't really have an improvement in my everyday life then I might have to consider giving up derby and running and I also instead of maybe doing that um, they might try me on beta blockers to maybe make it so my heart doesn't have that reaction where it doesn't just keep going and going and going. We'll, we'll see. Um, but I just, I wanted to make a video about this guys because I do know so many of you guys care. It's been really humbling how many of you guys care. Um, but I want to let you guys know what's going on. Um, I mean, I'm still me. I'm still the same person. It's just after years of not knowing what's going on, I finally do. And I maybe have some ways to fix it so I don't feel so shitty all the time. Um, thank you. Um, I will make like another video about my, my testing because I really feel like if you have any of the symptoms that I've talked about that I have, uh, that maybe you should also get tested, but I also feel like you guys should be a little bit more prepared than I was going into the testing because uh, some of the tests definitely were in the top five of the most pain I've ever felt in my life. So I'll make a separate video for that and just as like a, an out there in the world thing. So people that maybe have been suggested to get dysautonomia testing, maybe we'll go into it with a little bit more, <laughs> more prepared than I was. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching this. For those of you that actually watched it all the way to the end, um, thank you. Uh, for those of you that watched it and found out what was going on with me, um, I'm gonna give you these links, links below. There'll be links in the description box below um, for uh, anybody that wants to find out more about pot, uh, dysautonomia in general, or even about um, sensory neuropathy, um, you can also find that down in the description below. Um, I will also do an update when I do get all my blood work results. Uh, over the course of all this testing, I've had 30 vials of blood taken in a month, which is a little bit more than giving blood. So, yay! <laughs> So I'm also dealing with that in addition to like all this, but I'm, 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 I'm a little low on blood in addition to having all these other things going on. Um, but thank you guys so much for caring, uh, so much for watching this video. Um, please give me a thumbs up just to give me feels that are good. Um, if you didn't like the video, bye. I don't know why you watched this long. <laughs> Um, and also if you want to see more of me, uh, you can either follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv backslash heroinp0b 
or you can hit that subscribe button down there. And uh, thanks guys again. See you later. Bye! Okay, so, sorry. Uh, that brings us to the main point of this video, which is Yes. Hey, do you have a, uh, a uh, signed agreement from a leader? Uh, yes. I kind of need this, dude. I don't know most of the... Okay. I'll email it to you. All right, later. Bye.